Okay, we're standing in a tent and who are you and what are you doing? <laughs> well, my name is Cahill Garvey. I'm founder of IndieBiotech.com for that quick plug while I've got the opportunity. And at the moment, for laughs, I'm doing a DNA extraction from banana. It's my first time doing DNA extraction from banana. We're doing it in the Hackers Kiss tent at uh, Minefields. And I'm after mashing up a banana in a test tube. And I'm trying to get as much of this squidgy banana up into this pasture bed as I can. Very, very quick. I'm going to put it into the centrifuge tube here, which is an industry standard little tube. Holds about 1.5 millimeters of stuff. Now, banana paste being as it is, it's not nearly as liquid as the other alternatives. Most people go for strawberries or kiwis, but I couldn't find any of my fields, so we're doing bananas. And we'll see what kind of results we get. Now, you can actually do this using as little as dishwater detergent, uh, tape head cleaning fluid, or it's called isopropyl alcohol, you get it in the local chemist, uh, salt and Sorry. No, that's it. Yeah, so you need dishwasher detergent, salt, alcohol, and something to extract the DNA from. But I'm making it a bit fancier because I have better resources. So I'm using a highly purified form of dishwasher detergent called sodium lauryl sulfate. Look in the ingredients and you'll see that on so, almost sodium, everything in your house. Sodium what? Sorry? Sodium lauryl sulfate. It's in the ah. ingredients of anything like shampoo. Yeah, shampoo, detergent. yeah. It's, it's, yeah. I happen to have pure sodium lauryl sulfate with it around. So I'm going to use that. Take on, you only need a drop. So a little bit of sodium lauryl sulfate. And what that does is the cells are surrounded, for the most part, by a membrane of uh, fatty lipids. And by adding a detergent to that, you help to break, break those open and release the DNA inside. You can see it's getting nice and uh, bubbly inside. <clears throat> and I'm gonna let that sit for a minute. Now, here's another thing that's not essential, but I'm doing it because I can. If you go down to your local health store, you'll find an enzyme called bromelain. Bromelain is extracted from pineapples and it's a protease, that means that it digests and destroys proteins. When you do a DNA extraction using the stuff that you find in the kitchen, a lot of stuff that will come out will actually be protein contamination. Some people who are particularly picky have given out about this online in the past. And in order to, to, to deal with this problem, in order to deal with this problem, I'm going to use some pineapple bromelain enzyme to break down a lot of that protein before I do the DNA extraction. So now that I've added the sodium lauryl sulfate, to break open the cells, including the DNA, including the protein. Yeah, I'm going bromelain. to add some of this purified bromelain. I just ground up a bromelain tablet and centrifuged it on this thing to remove all the crud in water. So oh. I got some bromelain in this water. I'm going to add that to the mix and give it another jab and a bit of a squidge. Yep. Um, we're going to have to talk about your centrifuge because that is... <clears throat> well, I'm not going to be able to talk while it runs, so I might as well introduce it while this all thing's right. cooking. Well. All right, so what we've got here is a Dremel with a head on it, which you designed, right? I designed it in an open source CAD package called OpenSketch, <laughs> but you, I could have equally designed it in Google SketchUp or something. Sure. And, and what it allows you to do is clip in these industry standard centrifuge tubes on either side, like this. And they clip in in a highly secure fashion, so that you really can't pull them out if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. If you balance your centrifuge carefully, so that it's got equal weight on both sides, I'm going to just do now by flicking out a bit of that tube. Or roughly equal weight on both sides. Uh, are you going to know which switch? <clears throat> mm, good you point. might want to label yeah, well, one we'll of them. use a different colour tube. Right yeah. here. <laughs> here, uh, See there, that, that is one of the mindful elements of science that some people just, like myself, often forget to do. <laughs> so thanks for the quick reminder. So, you, right. you give it a roughly balanced but thing on both sides of your centrifuge. Yeah, so... Um, I was actually able to design and print this thing using a 3D printer called a MakerBot. We have an example of a MakerBot over here in the Todd Hacker Space in Dublin. And I printed it on my own MakerBot until I had a working prototype. And then I offered it online as an open source hardware design. So you can download the Dremelfuge file, print it for yourself on your own MakerBot if you're lucky enough to own one, or a RepRep, or a Ultimaker as they're making now in, uh, in Europe. Yep, yep. And slap it into a Dremel. That's uh, Eric one. de Bron's project. And, um, All right. you know. So the, uh, compared to industrial, like if you buy a centrifuge, you said that's about 1,000 euros best case. What What's the typical? You would expect to find a very old crappy centrifuge for maybe 400 euro if you're lucky, but that won't hit the speeds that you'll often need to really do practical genetic work in a lab. A modern centrifuge, best case scenario, you might expect 1,000 euro or something yeah. like that. You could print this for about a euro's worth of plastic if you have a MakerBot or RepRap. I recommend though that people 
you know, go via Shapeways, not just because it helps to support my efforts, but because Shapeways can offer a much higher quality and standardised design. I know that my one works, so I can more or less say they, they give a very high standard Dremel, Dremel Fuge. Mm -hmm. um, but you can't print these on your own if you have a printer of your own. Yeah. And you can just put them into the Dremel and it'll cost you only about a euro's worth of plastic. If you already have the Dremel, it's as close to free as you'll get for a centrifuge. Yeah. Short of sticking it on a rope and swing it. And of course the Dremel is uh, the kind of thing that you're going to have lying around your hacker space anyway. So. Exactly. All right, yeah. here what we go. What I'm going to do here is I've after allowing the enzyme to chew away for a while to do most of the work probably. Um, I mean, conditions aren't perfect, but I'm not looking for perfect. I'm just looking for decent. We're in a tent, yeah. <laughs> so, by centrifuging this down, I'll be able to separate all of the solids from the liquid which contains the DNA and what remains of any contamination. And it's that liquid which I want to be extracting. By centrifuging it, I can remove all the contaminating solid and just get the liquid. Right. So we'll just do that now. And now I'm going to cover it. Just in case. Just because I don't believe in collateral damage. <laughs> Other people avoid this problem by being outside of the plane of rotation because if by some chance the tubes were to eject they would be doing so in a very straight vector uh, you know, away from the thing. <laughs> but with the newer version of Dremel Fuse I haven't had any ejections occur so far even a full load so I'm pretty confident in myself and when I'm on my own I wear goggles. <laughs> That's good. Safety first. Yeah. <laughs> Go get your helmet. Don't allow anyone else to be around. Yeah, that's going really fast. I'm, cr I'm cranking it slowly up. It's now, now at full speed. <laughs> Hefty wind. The gods don't particularly like what you're doing. The gods do not Some of the tents over there blew over. Whoa. <laughs> Oops. Oh well. Not good. <laughs> People are standing there looking confused. This is unfortunate right. journalism at its best. <laughs> so, what I'm going to do now is you do not need a centrifuge to do an indie DNA extraction. You can just do the DNA extraction with just what you have on hand. Like, you, you don't need bromelain, you don't need a centrifuge. You can just do the DNA extraction from the squidge. But it's much easier to see if you can just have a clear solution like that. So I'm going to extract that clear solution using a pasture pipette because I don't have my good pipettes with me. So the top layer is going to be the bit containing all of the... The top uh, layer should contain any DNA that was liberated. Although I've never done this with banana so I don't know how good banana is for DNA extractions. We got a fresh tube and inject our DNA in there. Now, this is the part where I lack foresight. <laughs> to this, you add a small amount of salt and dissolve the salt, and then add isopropyl alcohol. And the isopropyl alcohol, when there's enough salt in the liquid, will sit on top and the DNA will come out. But I forgot to bring salt. So I might just try it with the isopropyl alcohol anyway and see if it works. And if not, I'll add a pinch of salt and give it a shake. <laughs> so I also have my isopropyl alcohol with me in one of these tubes. Um, in my actual lab, I'm much more organised than this. Here's my IPA, isopropyl alcohol. You can get 70% isopropyl alcohol from a pharmacy. You can also get 100% chemistry supply shops online. I use Mistral NI Dakota UK. They're a nice Irish, Northern Irish supplier. They sell very nice chemicals, very, very reasonable price, and they let you pay by PayPal, so I'm very fond of them. Now, this was the DNA I just took out. We'll see if we have any luck. So, what time is the hacker space? Now, it's going to be kind of hard to see. And I believe that you're beginning to see in the middle there an interface forming of cloudy white material. 
and that cloudy white material is the DNA and any remaining contaminants. Yep. As the DNA falls into the isopropanol where it's not, it's insoluble, it just falls out and becomes visible as it catches and diffracts the light. I'm not sure we're going to catch it on the video. I'm afraid uh, not, but I am beginning to see something that looks suspiciously like DNA to me. Yeah. Now you could use this DNA, which is moderately pure if you're after using these like bromelain steps and centrifuging it down. It won't be ideal and it won't be completely stable the way that it is unless you clean it up a bit further. I could go on to centrifuge this again to pellet the DNA and maybe in a minute when I've allowed it to all filter out, I'll do just that and have a pellet of DNA mm -hmm. from which I can remove all the contaminants. You could use this DNA to run a DNA analysis on the banana to find banana genes and amplify them out. If you were doing this to your own DNA, you could use this as a means to identify your own genetic proclivities. So to find out, as a harmless example, whether or not you can really taste Brussels sprouts. Or as a more practical example, to find out whether you have the genes that predispose you to breast cancer. So seeing as you can do this uh, DNA extraction using only kitchen safe chemicals and a moderately cheap centrifuge, the only problem then is doing the PCR reaction. That's a whole different story. But it's <laughs> well, an of how close to reality this is getting. But DIY bio people have already figured out closet PCR, which is um, a way of doing just that with a uh, hundred dollars worth of materials. You, you can make a thermocycler, one of the necessary pieces of equipment for a PCR reaction, using as little as a light bulb and a, a, ca a computer case fan, which they did in the Genspace hackerspace um, in New York recently. And with the thermocycler, all you, all you will then need is raw material for more DNA so that you can copy it, which is surprisingly the hardest part to get. An enzyme that does the job, which I'm hoping to help facilitate, so that you can produce enzyme on your own at home. Um, and a special type of marker DNA called primers, which allow you to identify the site you want. You'll get more than enough primers to run hundreds of reactions for 20 euro through a DNA synthesis company online. So if a community were to buy the, G the primers for a breast cancer genetic test, they could potentially be able to test the whole neighborhood mm -hmm. for these genes using really cheap DNA extraction, home-brewed PCR enzymes, yeah. a really cheap hacked together PCR machine, and salmon sperm DNA, which is funnily enough where you get the DNA raw material. Okay. But we're uh, there's an effort to try and find ways of making easier uh, raw materials for PCR. Okay. But of course, again, if you just buy salmon sperm, if you just pack the DNA from a DNA supply company, again, you'll have more than you need for hundreds of reactions. So maybe it's not that big a deal that you can't make it at home. So, um, while you sent you just, um, you you were talking earlier about. Um, oh, it's a bit loud, isn't it? <laughs> All right. Well, you were talking earlier about uh, using yogurt to, as a uh, deployment vector for um, drugs, basically curing diseases with yogurt. Um, so, you know, in like the two minutes that we've got left, could you uh, say something about that? Because, you know... I'd need to spin it a bit faster. You're seeing how it's the DNA is beginning to migrate down. Yeah. But I'd have to spin it faster and I don't have a, I should really balance these before I spin it again because that's why it's being so noisy. Mm. Let's see what DNA looks like, right? Can you tell what it is? Uh, you to, your own, to my untrained eye, how would you best That cloudy it? white there underneath the layer of the isopropyl alcohol on the water, that cloudy white is DNA beginning to migrate down because I spun it at such speed. But because it was so shaky, I decided I should stop it and uh, balance things before starting again. Right. So I might do that while I continue talking. Yeah. But I think we were discussing before the uh, camera came on. Yeah. Was that in principle, it should not be impossible to generate medicines on site in countries that need them, you know, when they're needed, using a genetically modified form of yogurt bacteria, for example, or baker's yeast, to produce these life saving medicines for people who need them, which over outsteps the common problem in actually treating these diseases in the wild, which is getting the antibiotics there, producing enough antibiotic, refrigerating it, delivering it through a, a, a very poor transmission network, a road network for example. If you had a genetically engineered yogurt that produced tetracycline to cure um, bacterial diseases, and you give this to people and you tell them to use it carefully, judiciously, with the advice of whatever local doctor you've been able to train to give advice on when and where to apply mm -hmm. tetracycline, they can produce as much tetracycline as they need when they need it by simply brewing up more ends, more so antibiotics. you're talking about killing um, a, a large part of the um, pharmaceutical monopoly 
and you're talking about doing it with essentially um, some variation on this kind of technology, this stuff that we've just seen PCR in a tent. And yeah. And well, the pharmaceutical industry has not served the people who need it most, right. and it's had decades to do so. And I think that any argument that, oh, they're getting around to it, is at worst, at best mistaken and at worst self serving. Yeah. If people don't get involved in fixing people's problems, it won't happen. There is no commercial interest in curing the diseases of the poor as things stand. So people who have no commercial interests are the only people who will actually go out and do anything about it. And I'd like to see people getting involved in fixing world problems using biotechnology, which is naturally, in a way, more sustainable than the existing equivalents. And you just showed that it's really, really easy. Well, well, well I mean, I mean, it's, it's a yeah, story, yeah, but sure, I mean, this is kind of one well, step. But if you to wanted it. to sit me down and ask me how to go about making tetracycline yogurt, I could tell you in about 10 minutes, because the information is there online on how to make a genetic organ, a genetically modified organism that will produce these things. All you need is the upfront investment of just enough money to order the DNA over the internet, an investment that's crashing in price with each passing year, and the time spent by at least one individual to go out and do that. <laughs> and once it's made, it's free because you can grow as much of it as you want on waste material. Great. So thanks for that. Thanks very much. Yep.